episode of Bookmarks, hosted by the DigiCast. I am Sherry's Joy, I am half of the DigiCast, and welcome. Today, this is, we are going to, um, well, I <laughs> am going to talk about uh, Don't Let Her Stay by Nicola Sanders. This is book three, and normally I do this in two parts, but this book was so short and I read it so fast, I'm just going to do it one show um for you so again uh don't let her stay by nicola sanders i am going to talk about my experiences reading it um and also this is full-on spoilers so if you would like to read the book and then listen to the show please do so if not then i welcome you to stay and listen but before we continue please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and to this video on YouTube. And um, with that being said, here I go. So Don't Let Her Stay is a psychological thriller and the book was um, published in 2023, February 9th. It's 288 pages. I started reading this book on the 21st, which was Tuesday. It is now the 26th which is Sunday I read it pretty quickly um, I'm recording this today not that it matters I'm just simply saying <laughs> so all right so the book let's get into it um, so it's a recently married couple there the book takes place in England Joanne is the main character and her husband's name is Richard last name is Atkinson that doesn't necessarily matter um, in this book and so they they're recently married how did they meet all right so joanne is a real estate agent and she was showing richard and his girlfriend at the time uh, a house that he wanted to you know that they wanted to possibly buy so they are in the house and joanne is showing richard around isabel isabella or is it yeah Isabella is the ex-girl is the girlfriend that you know was with Richard at the time and they're kind of waiting on her she's late so Joanne gets started and she shows Richard the house anyway and then they go down into the basement and she all but has like a panic attack she's like oh my god the basement she's like terrified of basements which I can understand basements can be kind of creepy but you know what you're a real estate agent you got to do what you got to do so they go down to the basement she shows them the basement and and the door shuts behind them and the door is locked how do basements automatically lock I have no clue um, I don't know but that probably shouldn't be a thing <laughs> so she's trapped they're trapped down there and she starts like hyperventilating and he's like don't worry I'm gonna get you out we're gonna get out and so he like stacks up some boxes and then he he slithers out of this like basement window which is really small and then he runs around to the front of the house and he opens it and they get out of that um and then i don't know some months later they they you know get back together or, or i don't i'm not really sure like she calls or excuse me richard calls joanne and tells her that they're not going to go with the house because they broke up like isabella was honestly on her way over there to break up with richard i'm not really that like who does that why let's go yeah let's go view a house that we are potentially gonna buy together but you know what it's like I'm not staying with ya. I'm breaking up. So anyway, whatever. They broke up and he started dating Joanne. And Joanne, one night at uh, dinner, starts, you know, she realizes that Richard has a bit of a temper. Um, she, she gets dressed up for dinner. It's like a nice restaurant, maybe dress code. Who knows? It doesn't really mention that. Or they're just going on a date and she just really wants to dress up. Doesn't matter. So she gets dressed up all fancy and cutesy and everything. And they're at dinner and she's like, they're having a conversation. Um, they hadn't ordered dinner yet. I think they just had ordered drinks and she's like talking about work. And she mentions, um, her coworker, Anthony and how he, um, kissed her one time at a um at a party at a work party and 
Richard loses his temper. Like, he is, like, he turns red. He's, like, get his jaw tightens. And he goes straight to, all right, well, now that, I mean, are you done telling me about you and your coworker now that you've, you know, now that you guys had sex and all this? It was like, whoa, we didn't say anything about sleeping together. Like, and he just gets mad and then he gets up and leaves. And she's like, what about dinner? He's like, you've ruined it. So that's the first time we see that he has a temper. And then some years, you know, then some time goes past and, you know, they, they had, they bought a house out in the middle of like the country and, um, there, they had a baby, they had a baby in November and this is about, this is February now. And they, uh, Richard receives a card or a letter from his daughter from a previous marriage because he's been married before his ex-wife's name is Diane and he's been married before and his daughter, her name is Chloe and she's going to be 21 very soon. And Chloe is like, yeah, I'm coming to see you. I'm, I miss you. I want to meet your new family and all this other stuff. And it's like this big surprise because, uh, Excuse me. It's this big surprise because Chloe really resented the fact that her father got married again. And so she didn't want anything to do with any of that. But now she's had a change of heart. So she wants to come visit and she wants to come visit her little baby sister. So she comes and she's like, you know, she's as sweet as she could be. She's a little immature acting, um, but she's like very clingy to her father. And they... um, you know, are just, I don't know, she's very clingy to her father. And then she's kind of like, ugh, to Joanne. She keeps calling her Joanna on purpose to irritate her. She's nice to Joanne, sort of, in front of her father. But then when her father's back is turned, she's like this evil, like, horrible person to her. Um... She makes her forget things, or she pretends like Joanne is forgetting things. Like, they talk about a birthday party um, because uh, Chloe is turning 21 and wants to have they her father, you know, they come up with this idea of, oh, we should throw you a party. You're going to be 21. You should invite some friends over. We have, like, this big, massive house, and we could have this big whole shindig and, you know, invite some friends over, and we'll do it on, and she's like, sure, yeah, my friends can come on Saturday. So they set everything up for Saturday or Joanne sets everything up for Saturday. And when Friday gets here, you know, the father is like, well, everybody will be here tonight. And Joanne is like, what are you talking about tonight? It's Saturday. No, it's Friday, Joanna. My name is actually Joanne. So things like that are happening. Um, jo- Joanne wanted to actually hire a nanny because she wants to go back to work part time, but like work from home. So just to two days a week doing some like office work filing and whatnot and she you know interviews these this nanny her name is Paula and she's like awesome they hit it off like right away and she really wants to hire her and she does hire her actually but then the father Richard is like oh Chloe can do it she can be the she can be the nanny and the baby's name is Evie. She can be Evie's nanny. She and that'll, you know, give you that'll give her and Evie some time to bond. That'll give you some time to work, even though Richard is not happy about her going back to work. And uh at this point Joanne is like, I don't really that's not necessary. Like I really liked Paula. It's not necessary. I can manage. I would rather do this you know, on my own, I don't need Chloe's help. Oh, you just, so it, it, it turns into Chloe's like, oh, you just don't want me around. Do you not like me? Like, what can I do? She's like a total spoiled brat. So she ends up, Joanne ends up calling the agency and is like, actually, you know, come to find out we don't really need Joanna. I mean, we don't really need Paula. You know, I'm sorry. We really liked her, but would you please let that let her know that we really that I really did like her and she was she would be a well fit for us our family um so you know that happens and that gets let go and just more things start to happen you know like they go the father just insists she's he's like pushing Chloe 
and Joanne together, he's really making it seem like everything that's going wrong is because of Joanne. So, for instance, the day that she came, Joanne set up the bedroom very nice for Chloe. You know, she picked them some fresh flowers from the garden and made a, a nice arrangement and put it in the room. Richard got, like, really upset because the least you could have did was go buy flowers instead of taking the cheap route and getting them from the garden and putting them in there. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I put in an effort to make this floral arrangement for her and it's beautiful. I thought that she would like these. And I don't, it's just a whole bunch of stuff. Richard, he buys Joanne a bike and you know a bicycle it's because she mentioned something about riding a bike or something so he goes out and like buys her a bicycle and she actually didn't ask for a bicycle she just kind of alluded to the fact that how that riding a bike was fun so he goes out and he buys her a bike well here's your bike now you can ride your bike and chloe can stay home with evie so you can go out and ride a bike well joanne never touched the bike because chloe keeps taking it and riding it um, and going places with it. And there's actually, they have a housekeeper. Her name is Roxanne. She comes once or twice a week to clean up. And Chloe and Roxanne have become really close. And Roxanne gives Chloe, like, all the gossip about what's going on in the house and things that she hears. Like, Joanne really did try to talk to Roxanne and befriend her because she has no one else to really talk to. But Joanne has her earbuds in all the time. Well... They're probably in all the time, but that doesn't mean she's actually listening to music because she she's eavesdropping and she hears, you know, a lot and sees a lot what's going on. I mean, which possibly I've been, I've never been a housekeeper, but from what I've seen on TV and read in books and stuff like that and in movies, they're listening. I mean, come on, like housekeepers have got to be like the most the closest person to you in your home you know, outside of your family, they know a lot. You can really, when you, you know, I mean, they're cleaning up after you and they're around and they can hear things and they listen. So they probably know great detail about you and your home. So her and Chloe become friends and they gossip a lot and, you know, all of that's happening. And it's just, it's just like, it's just shit show. <laughs> Honestly, you know, Chloe does not act her age. She's just clingy to her father. Like, oh, daddy, I love you. You know, hugs all the time. Kisses on her. He kisses her forehead all the time. She's just not acting her age. And she's acting like a spoiled brat. And then she turns around. She's so horrible to Joanne. And isn't it, at one point, you know, she tells Joanne that you don't know that dad is cheating on you. How can you not know? He's never home. He's you know, he's just, I just know that he's cheating on you. Like this, then she describes like this blonde, blue eyed, tall model type person. And she keeps calling Joanne fat because, you know, she just had a baby. She's not fat, but she just had a baby. So she probably has some baby weight and she keeps calling her fat and old because Joanne is in her thirties. And it's just, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like it's ridiculous. And Joanne is trying to do everything she can to ignore all of that and just be nice to Chloe because she wants to bond with her and also Richard is pushing them together but but you know there is only but so much you can take so there are some trust issues there so she doesn't really trust Chloe and that comes from one night um the the baby is teething and oh and they have a dog his name is Oscar and Oscar is great but the baby is 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 teething and so she cries a lot and one night she was crying and Joanne went to go to the nursery to take care you know to cater to her when she gets there she sees that Chloe is messing around with, with the bottle of it's called Copal I don't know I've I've never heard of it so I don't know if it's a newer thing if it's a British thing I have no idea but apparently you take it and you rub it on the baby's gums and that kind of helps with the teething. Um, so in my day, I had a teething ring. I you know, was born in the 70s. And then kind of like also my daughter, she was born in 08. 
and my stepdaughter was born in 07 and they both had teething rings we didn't know anything about any kind of stuff you put on the gums so sorry that didn't happen for us um but anyway <laughs> so she sees chloe like with this with the um bottle and you know and joanne starts freaking out like what are you doing or what are you you know what are you doing and then chloe drops it and it shatters and she's like you're doing she richard comes in what's going on what are you accusing chloe of now oh she was doing something like she thinks that chloe is messing with the bot with the um with the the container and putting something in it like poison or something to try to hurt evie because she does look at evie in this like evil way um so she just thinks that the, she's out to hurt the baby. So Joanne goes and she buys like these cameras that she can hide around the house to kind of like spy and see what's going on, you know, what, what Chloe is actually up to and to prove that she's, you know, not who she acts like she is. And the app is on her phone. Well, you know, Richard finds out about that and he gets so mad. He gets so mad when the camera is revealed and he's like how dare you spy on me in my own house and my own daughter and yada 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 and he makes her tell him where all the cameras are and he's like you better not be lying to me these better be this better be it or you'll be sorry type of thing and he takes them and he throws them in a bin and they get kind of pushed to the side so that's you know that's that and then another at another point chloe blackmails joanne is like you need to leave you and evie need to leave so that daddy and i can stay in my house um because richard dad he keeps saying well this is your house too you're you're welcome to stay as long as you want you live here this is your house um so she's like you need to get out you and evie need to go I'm going to stay and you just need to go and leave me and dad, dad doesn't want you, yada, yada, yada. And she's all, she pulls up a picture of Joanne and the gardener whose name is um, Simon. And it's a photoshopped picture of Joanne kissing um, the gardener on the cheek. And Joanne is like, well, how did you, what, that is, that's me from a party like last year and that's your i'm um, kissing your dad so how did you get this so the chloe was out there flirting with the gardener a couple of days ago and was taking selfies so she basically photoshopped all those the pictures together to make it look like um chloe i mean that, that joanne and the gardener are having something because you know what is that that's your cliche uh 30 year old you know hot uh, housewife and the hot gardener getting it on you know while the husband is at work that type of thing <laughs> um so basically yeah so she's blackmailing her with that and you need to leave and all this other stuff so then it comes to surface that richard needs to leave for a business trip um he'll be gone for like a couple of days like three days and chloe was getting ready to leave anyway she's like well she, Joanne doesn't want Joanna <laughs> doesn't want me here and I'm getting bored anyway and I miss my friends so she's like she lived in London so I miss my friends and London's an hour and something away so I'm just gonna leave and Richard is like no you don't have to leave actually please don't leave you know he's like begging her to stay we want you here you're want we you're want to hear isn't that right Joanne and Joanne's like yeah um we want you here we want you to stay actually I'm going on a trip and a business trip and it would be very helpful for you to stay if you're here to help out with Evie and um, Joanne can work peacefully and all this other stuff don't leave don't go anywhere until after I get back from my trip Chloe is like okay <laughs> so it's like all right well clearly you weren't really gonna leave you just said that so it's and you know it's crazy so, um, meanwhile Chloe is not watching Evie while Joanne is working. Um, he, you know, they had Zoom meetings and they're just not happening because she's letting the baby cry. It's like she's, she's destroying this on purpose, you know, sabotaging on purpose so that uh, Joanne can't work. 
So Joanna actually ends up telling her boss, which is her friend, you know, like, hey, this isn't working right now. I can't work right now. Maybe once I get an actual babysitter or nanny, a nanny is what it's called, what they keep calling it, um, you know, I can go back to work. Oh, well, that's a shame, but let us know, yada, yada, whatever. And she's like, okay, fine. So she goes, she actually needs someone to talk to. She keeps trying to tell her husband, like, something is not right. This girl, she hates me. She's sabotaging our relationship and this whole thing. And the husband is like, you are crazy. You're taking after your mother because her mother was in the psych ward and all this other stuff. She had like high anxiety and stuff. You're taking after your mother. This isn't right. I need you to get tested. I need you to go to see this doctor, the doctor again. You're off your meds. You're out of your mind. Nuts. So she goes to the doctor and she has this conversation. She never takes the medicine because she's not actually crazy because she knows that she's not forgetting things and she's not misplacing things. It's Chloe sabotaging. So she goes one day to talk to her friend, Robin, her best friend, Robin, who actually is a London thing. And they talk and Robin is basically like, you need to get her out of that house. <laughs> Get her out of that house and trust your instinct. You know, do what you can so that you and Evie are safe and you can get your life back. So that's what she does. You know, she trusts her instincts and everything. She, the night before Richard leaves, she puts the cameras back up. Um, she did see Evie in the shadows of the nursery one night on the camera, uh, crouched down just watching the crib, which was very creepy. Um, but, you know... So the next day, Richard leaves. He's and he's like, you should call. I don't want you by yourself. You're losing your mind. I want you. I want Roxanne to come and stay. We'll pay her extra, of course. And uh, Joanna's like, no, no, that's okay. I'll be fine. And he's insisting. And then Joanna's like, yeah, maybe that would be good because Roxanne and Chloe are close. So that'll keep them to, that'll keep Chloe occupied and I can kind of have some peace of mind. So she agrees. She's like, yeah, sure. So he's like, all right, good. And he calls her and arranges it. And Chloe comes out of the woodwork and is like, what's going on? Oh, we're going to call her, you know, and he, over, she overheard the conversation. So Richard says his goodbyes. He tells, he shows Chloe how to feed the fish. They have like a, a koi pond and he shows her how to feed the fish. And then he's like off. So later, um, Joanne wants to put this lock on the nursery. So she requests Simon's help. So she asks Simon to go to like the hardware store to get a lock, a good lock to put on the nursery door. And he makes a joke. He's like, cause you think Evie's going to get up and walk away. <laughs> and she's like, no, just, I just want it for safety and all this other stuff. So he leaves and he comes back and he puts the lock on and they hear something upstairs and it's like, well, what was that? And um, he goes upstairs and checks it out. And he's like, it was nothing. It was just an open window. Probably just a draft made something move or the house is creaking or something like that. And um, he leaves. And then Chloe, he, uh, um, all hell breaks loose from there. <laughs> And it, I mean, this is, the book gets like really, really intense, like seriously, it really is a page turner, but this, the book, the end of the book just gets really, really intense. And I can like, I can, I have tension and my heart is like racing and I can see, I can visualize, I can see what's happening. Like the writer really puts you in the scenery and you can really just it's almost like a virtual reality through a book like like you're there with them running around through the house it's it's really crazy um so what happens is is chloe is telling joanna joanne about how crazy her father is oh i'm sorry let me back up before that sorry 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 um Joanne meets with a news reporter. Um, his name is Jim Preston because she came across a news article about what happened to Chloe's mother, um, Richard's ex-wife, Diane. She, they, they ruled it a suicide. 
So basically she fell off of the, at the top of the stairs, there's like a loft in your house. She fell off of that loft and Chloe was there. She, Chloe was 11 and the mother was dead for like a night, a whole night, like nine hours or something like that. And the phones are all dead and Chloe did not call. So Chloe couldn't call 911 in England. It's 999. Um, she couldn't call the police for help because the phone lines were dead and this is, you know it's like okay so everybody suspected that Chloe killed her mother like pushed her um so Richard sent her to a, a psychiatric center to get help and she got better and she, you know he signed her out and stuff but they also had Sophie uh Chloe also had a baby sister named Sophie and Sophie died as a baby. They called it crib death. Um, so that was the other thing. Like at one point at the beginning, Eve, uh, Chloe wanted to hold Evie and she was holding her and her head was like bouncing around. So she wasn't really holding her properly. So that really, you know, startled Joanne as well. And then another time she, she just, she freaked out. When it came to feeding, when Chloe had to feed Evie, she freaked out. She froze and she couldn't do it. And she's like, don't tell my dad. So all of these things. So yeah, so she met with the news reporter and to kind of find out what, what more information he knew or remembered about that night. So he thought something was very suspicious. Um, it comes to find out, like Chloe said that she saw someone in the shadows and she kept changing her story around and the news reporter is like something's not right with that girl don't trust that girl something's not right and so now we fast forward to Richard leaving for his thing so they're in the nursery Joanne and Chloe are in the nursery and Chloe is telling Joanne you can't trust my father <laughs> he killed my mother and he blamed it on me he killed her for the insurance money because of um, his company going down and losing money. So, and she was loaded. So he killed her because of that. And it's like a whoa moment, like whatever. So they're going, you know, she's like, she's got Evie and she will not give Evie to Joanne. She's like, no, I have to protect you and I have to protect my sister. Actually, she wants up to, wants to protect her sister from my dad. My dad didn't really leave. He's here. This is what happened when my mother died. He said that he had a business trip, but he didn't leave the house. Um, he went somewhere and he hid and waited and he pushed her off of the steps and she died. So dad's coming back and all this other stuff. And then lo and behold, Richard does come back. And I was like, well, what are you doing back? He's like, he makes like some excuse and he's like, so I had to come back. And Chloe's like, I told you. So then, you know, all of these things are happening. And the dad is like, I believe you, Joanne. Now, all of a sudden, he believes his wife about how crazy Chloe is. And it's like, what? So Chloe, so Chloe is that was there to save Evie and Joanne from the father because she knew that the dad was going to kill them for insurance money because this is what happened before. So they're hiding. I mean, she just keeps refusing to give Evie to Joanne. Joanne still doesn't trust Chloe and what she's saying. And so Richard goes to get an ax to break down the door because Chloe has locked herself in the bathroom with the baby. So, Joanne is like, you got to call the police. We've got to call the police. And Rich is like, no need for the police. We'll handle this our way. And I love you. And I'm sorry I didn't believe you before, but she's crazy. And Chloe is telling her more evidence of like, this is not me. This is him. So she doesn't really know who to trust. But Chloe is like, look, everything I told you is true so far. He's doing it. Like he's coming. He came back. Think about it. And so Joanne starts to believe that, you know, she starts to believe Chloe 
And because she's really, you know, telling the truth. So all she wants is her baby. So she unlocks the, she, so sorry, I know, because it's a lot. (laughs) So Richard comes back and he goes into the nursery and he's like axing down the door to the bathroom in the nursery. And meanwhile, while he was gone, she got Chloe and Evie out of the bathroom and she trapped Richard in the nursery so she could lock him in the nursery. So she locks him in the nursery. Chloe leads Joanne down to the basement, which she's, remember, Joanne is terrified of the basement, but adrenaline and we do whatever we can to protect our child, children. Um, she goes down into the basement and they go way in the back of the basement and they hide in this like little between walls. There, there was some renovations that were starting to happen. So they hide between walls and she's asking Chloe like, well, okay, well, what about the cor- the stuff for the baby's gums? She was like, uh, you remember you asked my dad to go to the store to pick up a new, a new jar. And because I think that, you know, he killed my sister as well. I switched the bottles because I, you know, he probably put something in there to poison her. Um, so he could kill her. But why? Why would he kill his own daughter? Why would he do this to his family for the insurance money? And why have you been being so mean to me? And why all of these things, you know, why, why do all of this? So basically, Chloe was being evil to Joanne and nice to her dad because she was pushing Joanne away, hoping that Joanne would take Evie and leave to protect them. Okay. So meanwhile, there's an axe going on upstairs. So they pull, you know, and the SIM card has been taken from Joanne's phone, but the Wi-Fi still works. <laughs> Excuse me. And she pulls, you know, she pulls up the camera and they can kind of see where he's going and where things are at. And they escape. They, you know, oh, meanwhile, the house, the house has been doused with gasoline and, you know, as if they're, I guess they're going to, he's going to set the house on fire. He's going to smoke them out. So they, they escape and the house is on fire and Oscar has been hurt because Richard kicks the dog, um, to get him out of the way. But Richard says that he did it by accident. He didn't, he didn't think that he kicked him that hard, but you know, he was really trying to get the door down to get to Evie to save his baby and to make sure Joanne was okay. And he's like yelling like psycho around the house. He's calling Chloe a psycho B and he's like yelling, Joanne, I love you. Don't trust her. I'm sorry. I didn't believe you. She's crazy. Um, so, you know, they get out of the house, they get to the car Well, actually, Joanne and Evie get out of the house and get to the car. Chloe sacrifices herself to save them. Just get my sister out of here. I'll make noise upstairs to distract him so he thinks that we're upstairs. So she goes upstairs. Joanne and Evie get in the car and they start to go. And, you know, Joanne is like, I made a promise to Chloe that I would help, you know, that I wouldn't leave her behind. So she goes in and she sits, she gets Chloe and they escape too and they're out there they're outside and Richard makes it to the driveway where the car is and he's like um you know again apologizing to Joanne I love you and all this other stuff and Chloe takes over and he gets she gets the he gets the Chloe takes over the conversation and is like dad you never cared about me my mother or my sister you don't care about them. You don't care about anything. You did all of this and she shoots him in the face with a shotgun. And Joanna, Joanne is like, why did you kill him? Like, there is nothing. He, he wasn't, um, a threat because Oscar had attacked him. <laughs> Oscar, you know, jumped up and like was biting on his butt and everything. And, Chloe had already smashed in his leg and stuff like he was very hurt so all they had to do was call the police and she's like it's better this way trust me so then I don't know how they get rescued because the book goes to the last chapter and it's like six months later and six months later Chloe and Joanne and Evie they are all living together no mention of Oscar 
Um, but they're all living together and Joanne is back. Um, Chloe is, you know, her normal self and she's got her job at the pub and she, and all this stuff, you know, normalness and they have a good relationship and things have been going very, very well. So they want to, um, they, they hear from, uh, Chloe's grandmother and they want to, they go to visit her. And they go there, which is Diane's mom, the ex-wife that was killed. They go there and they go to her and they're having dinner. And then Nan is like, Nan is what they call her. She's like, okay, tea, we need strawberry jam with our, with our tea and bread, biscuits, biscuits. Um, Chloe, would you go out to the store and get some? And she's like, oh, we don't need any. And she's like, yeah, yeah, we do. Of course we do. Don't be silly. Go to the store and get some for your Nan. So she, Chloe leaves. And the grandmother, her name is Helen, is talking to jo uh, talking to Joanne about the past because <laughs> they're flipping through a photo album. And it was like, yep, yeah, well, this happened. So uh, Richard came to see me often. You know, he loved his family. He misses Diane. He misses Sophie. And he loves Chloe. He misses his family and all that. He was a good man. And this happened to him. And I'm... So sorry. So they're like having this like flashback conversation, not flashback conversation, but they're talking about the past and stuff. Come to find out, uh, everything Chloe said was a lie. The Richard was doing fine. You know, he wasn't a good businessman, but he was doing okay. And he was a family man and he loved his family. It was Chloe that was jealous of Sophie the whole entire time. Ever since Sophie was born, she regretted her parents for having another baby. And in every single picture that they looked at where it was Sophie and Chloe, you see Chloe giving the death stare at Sophie, like just evil face. And just, you know, so they actually sent Chloe for some help um, to kind of deal with it and she just never got right the jealousy you know she's very 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 clingy to her father the jealousy was there when the new baby was born and she just never forgave her parents for having another baby so they you know and she actually admitted that she pushed her mother down the stairs because she was upset and you know she got put sent away never um Richard never said why, never told anyone that she admitted pushing her father or pushing her mother down the stairs. And the baby's autopsy came back and she did have poison in her. Oh, gosh. And so the book, you know, so Helen, uh, excuse me, Joanne is like, freaking out she's like are you serious like and then she can see all of these things and she's putting everything together and i can see her brain going flip 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 like everything putting together like a movie montage of all the flashes of all the things that have been happening and she puts it together and she's like wow and then she's like what am i supposed to do about chloe and helen says he, she touches her hand and says, don't let her stay. And the book ends. <laughs> the book ends with the title. Um, so I don't feel like I explained it. I don't, I mean, I explained it, but I, it wasn't like, I don't know, like it's, you know, a picture, you see something in person, but then you, and you take a picture of it and the picture doesn't do it justice. I feel like, I'm not doing the book justice. Like there's, there's just, there's, it's a good book. It's a really good psychological thriller. It's, it is good. But the whole time I was like, I've seen this movie. Like this is a movie. I've seen it. I have seen it. It sounds so familiar. Did I read this book already and just forget like a long time ago? Did I see this movie? So I actually looked it up and I didn't. I mean, I couldn't find anything that was a movie that was made from this book. This book was, you know, published in 2023. So I haven't read it before, like a long time ago and just don't remember. But what I did see are a lot of like reviews that the book is predictable, 
Um, so maybe that's what it is, but I just, I don't know. I can't shake that I've seen this movie in some way, shape or form. Like all of this really does seem familiar. I don't know. Is it deja vu? Not sure, but, um, it was a good read. So, and if anybody knows, if you guys know, like if there was a movie that was this type of plot or another book that had this type of plot and some of the things did happen, please, please leave comments in, uh, below and let me know because I, that really was driving me nuts. <laughs> Twice I had to look that up, but I couldn't find any information. Um, but it really, it really was, it was a fast read. It was a good read. The writer was, it was, it was, I had to get, you know, adjust to like some of the British writing and some of the British words I had to look up. Um, but it was a good read. It was written very well. Like I said, I was put inside of the book, especially the end with that, you know, action scene. And I would definitely read another book by this author. Very, very much so. Um, I have a couple that are in my list to check out, but I do have some others that I want to read before then. Um, my next book that I'm going to read is called The Maid's Diary by Lorith Ann White. I don't know this author. This would be a new read for me, um, but it was recommended on my, um, you know, from my Kindle account. So I am going to check that out again, The Maid's Diary by Lorith Ann White. And um, we'll see how many episodes I do. The typical, my plan is to do two parts of each book. But this, like I said, this book was so short and I went, I ran through it so quickly. I decided to go ahead and talk about this. So I do thank you all for listening. I really appreciate your, um, your likes and your subscribes. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. Um, I'm Sherry's Joy. I am half of the Digicast. You can obviously find us on YouTube at the Digicast One. You can check out our blog, the Digicast.substack.com. We have a flipboard. You just search for the Digicast. As I keep saying, there isn't much up there yet. We are working on the content. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, the Digicast. We're on Instagram, the Digicast. Spotify as the Digicast. And please use our affiliate link for Amazon down below in the description below um, where you can see all, all of the fun things that we like to purchase on Amazon and um, that'll help us out our affiliate page for that and it will help you out too because we recommend these things for fun. We do a lot of things. We play board games. We go on trips. We do things on a budget and um, we enjoy making content for you. So as I said, Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you and your time. And also, if you have any suggestions for books that you would like me to read and, and talk about, if it's a book that you love and you think I would like it, or if it's a book that you love and you just want me to read it, or anything that you suggest, please, please, please feel free to let me know. I love, love, love thrillers. Um, so if you know a good psychological thriller or a thriller of any kind, please let me know. Again, next book don't, um, is The Maid's Diary by Laura Ann White. This has been book three of Bookmarks by the Digicast. Thank you all again. Love the world. <laughs>